So Three Houses has been out for about a, about a whole day for me and I've gotten around maybe 10-ish so hours of playtime as I'm recording this video and I just wanted to give some of my first impressions on the game because man it's a lot of fun and it's uh there's definitely a bit of information overload at the beginning of the game because there's just so many things to do. Just learning all the different aspects of like the uh, monastery part of the game is pretty insane and then you also have to learn what teaching does. Uh, honestly, combat is okay too, but if you're a new player, then you gotta learn that as well. Uh, battalions, gambits, combat arts, abilities, classes, there's just a lot of things going on. And at first, I thought it was a, I thought it was a bit daunting, if I'm being honest. But around like, uh, I would say like four or five hours in, once the game started, uh, kind of stopped introducing so many new mechanics at a time and you start to get into a flow of things, I, I thought it was a lot of fun. Like, I really enjoyed my time with the game so far. Once I got all the basic mechanics down, I I could start enjoying things like the characters, for example. I I really enjoyed all the characters so far. Uh, the house you pick personally will definitely shine the most in the game because, well, obviously you're going to be talking with them a lot. You're going to be interacting with them on missions and whatnot. Uh, the thing I do like is that the monastery part of the game, I wasn't expecting to interact with all the other students as well. And you actually get a lot of opportunity to talk with them even though they're not in your class, which is a lot of fun. Like, you can recruit them if you want, you can take them on, uh, you can bring them into your team to help with missions. Although, I'm not entirely sure if that's helpful because I think they have like their own level and whatnot. So, I don't think you want to give them extra experience that you could be using instead. Anyway, another thing I really enjoyed was the support conversations with all the characters and it's definitely a lot of fun getting to know our students better because, oh man, some of them are a, definitely a bit eccentric, uh, no surprise as a video game character, but you got people like Linhart who is super lazy or I thought he was going to be like really lazy, not as very talkative, but as you get to know him a bit more, I, I really started to enjoy his character a lot and then you, you have guys like Hubert in the Black Eagles who Literally everyone else in the house is literally like, let's become friends, we want to be uh, better together. Hubert is literally like, I'll kill you, and then you get the pop-up C support uh, achieved, and it's like, that's it's just very odd, and it's very weird, but at the same time, I feel like it's, it's kind of accurate to like, how, you know, sometimes there's just people you're not going to mesh with, and then there's just dudes that, they, they seem very weird and very unapproachable, I guess you could say. I look forward to the later support conversations when Hubert like probably does just kill somebody at a certain point. So uh, anyway, I want to move on to the monastery part of the game. And a question I had in my uh, other video to ask myself was, is the monastery fun? Like, is it actually enjoyable to run around, fish, grow crops, and just eat with your students and whatever and whatnot? So basically the way the monastery works is that every month it has a set of uh, places where people are going to be and then quests for you to do and I'm pretty sure if you explore in the same month like those things don't change like people don't change their position and the quests are the same so basically if you just explore one time in the month you can clear out everything and it takes it takes a long time like I tried to uh, tr I tried to talk to everybody I could do all the quests try to look around as thoroughly as I could because there's those blue wisps that have like lost items and stuff and it takes me like more than half an hour if I want to do that and and I guess the question is like is all of that enjoyable like is it a good part of the game or should you skip it and for me at least I uh, once again like be you get to talk to all the other students in the monastery not just your own class so I thought it was very fun to listen to some of what or some of the other students like what their thoughts and the events were like for example uh, there was a character that was related to Ash from the Blue Lions, and Ash kind of had a lot of things to say about him when you had a story mission about it, and he's not even in my class or anything like that, so it's kind of interesting to see. I guess if you're going to play the Blue Lion route, you'll get to hear more from Ash himself, so it's always interesting to look forward to things like that, playing the game again. Uh, regarding all the other features in the monastery, like a uh, fishing mini game, like that's fun. You get uh, different fishes that you can then use to cook a meal for your class to get extra stats for the month. So that's interesting. Uh, the greenhouse is kind of the same thing where you plant seeds and then you can get more seeds from that. But you can also get like flowers that you can give as gifts to people. Or I think you can get like uh, tea leaves that you can use for tea parties, but I'm not entirely sure about that one. 
uh, the thing about the monastery is that there's a lot of choices to be made regarding the uh, activities that cost you activity points and it's kind of tough like I don't I'm pretty sure there must be like some kind of optimal way to play the game if you want but otherwise it's determining things like okay if I want to share a meal with these two students I can raise their support levels I can raise their motivation levels so I can teach them more uh, if I, I can choose who I want to take to choir practice to get more faith skills and then increase their support as well and there's just like a lot of choice in this game and I think that's a lot of fun it's definitely not like a right way to do it all the time and you know it's your call it's your decisions and at the end of the day I do like things like that like what you choose does matter uh, speaking of decisions uh, let's talk about the teaching aspects of the game and uh, at the start I thought it was pretty simple like you just basically for the goal section you just pick two uh, subjects for your student to specialize in for the skill levels and when you increase your skill levels you can use better weapons you can uh, you get different abilities and combat arts and you get to class up into a different uh, or a better class which requires certain uh, skill levels and at first I was like okay this is pretty easy I kind of have an idea of what I want to make this person based on their strengths because they're going to learn it faster so that's good for me but at a certain point I felt like did I, I was questioning did I make the right decision and I feel like I wasted a couple lessons on points that I didn't really need but so my advice to you is going to be uh, when you get the option to uh, choose certification levels you can see all the later classes like advanced classes and I would just take some time like seeing what those classes require you to, to learn because I didn't understand who I should focus on riding, uh, flying, and then heavy armor because so I was like okay I kind of want to make my Ferdinand into a cavalier unit so I'm going to choose riding but uh, 10 hours in there's no class with a horse so far and I'm like I feel like I wasted some points at the moment that I could have just spent somewhere else so yeah like uh, just keep that in mind like if you if you're thinking of down the line about like Cavaliers flying units you don't get those to the intermediate classes which is kind of far away now obviously you're gonna have to prepare to get those classes like you're gonna want to get to D and riding before you unlock the intermediate classes but I was already at C for riding for Ferdinand and I was like there's no point in going further if I don't even have the class yet so I might as well change to something else at the moment Now you can definitely attribute that to like uh, being this is my first time playing the game and I'm not really looking that forward uh, just yet. I kind of want to just take it in as I go. Uh, but for later playthroughs, it's definitely something I'm going to keep in mind. So I guess overall, the teaching aspects, I feel like it it looks very scary at first. It's like there's a lot of things, there's a lot of icons, there's a lot of things I have to choose. But once you get it, you, you just pick one student for instructing. You level up the points, pure and simple. You don't have to do anything else. Uh, you can assign group tasks for like riding heavy armor and flying to level up those and then you just hit the begin lecture button and people automatically get extra skill levels so honestly it's a really simple system and I do enjoy it a lot like uh, I'm looking forward to how it, it progresses later on as I get into the end game but for now I, I feel like it's really good now I want to touch on combat and it feels good it feels like good old fire emblem combat but the twist of combat arts and gambits I think is a good addition like so now I think gambits are a lot of fun and potentially maybe a little OP I don't know so there's one gambit that it's called a uh, I think it's disruption or disturbance or something and that one if you hit it it prevents the enemy from moving anywhere which is really good and it came in clutch for me where I had an enemy archer that was targeting a low health unit they killed them I already used divine pulse to, to turn back time and then I was I wasn't able to put anyone in the archers path to block him but I had someone with that gambit that stopped him prevents him from moving and that solved all my problems and it was just amazing I was like that's really good it was also another situation where one of the gambits pushes an enemy back if you hit them so the bosses uh, love to stand on like healing tiles and fortress tiles in this game and I was like can I just push him off the healing tile turns out it worked like I used the gambit I hit him and it shoved the boss off the healing tile which then I could put a unit on it and I thought that was amazing that was pretty funny uh, the other thing is that uh, enemies can have battalions and gambits so that's a little scary like 
whenever I saw those triangles up next to an enemy, I was always checking like what gambit was it because the if they have the gambit that prevents you from moving, that is pretty devastating. Like it's very annoying, and it's an AOE too. So I thought that was pretty powerful. Uh, I'm not looking forward to uh, enemy gambits in the future. You're gonna have to watch out for that. Uh, as for combat arts, they definitely feel powerful, but I've been just running into the issue where it's like. I don't know how often I should be spamming these things because they definitely eat up durability if you're a little too gung-ho with them, but they can definitely be very powerful uh, things. Uh, I'm looking forward to some of the later combat arts because the early ones are okay, but besides adding a couple more damage, they're not game-changing so far. Uh, one thing is that I think magic is pretty busted. I don't know if that's because the Black Eagles, uh, they said the Black Eagles are pretty good mages, but Oh man, I made a. I have Hubert and Dorothea as my main uh, dark mag or dark mages, and they just wreck face. Like Hubert is does a lot of damage. He doesn't really miss, and then I have Dorothea who is doing a lot of damage and doubling people left and right with like Thorn and Thunder. So I'm enjoying magic a lot. Uh, the early game was super rough with magic. Like these starting missions where you only had like like five spells. I was like, man, this is this is gonna be tough, but. If you focus on reason and light magic, it gets a lot better. Like even my healer, uh, I've been using Linhart and then also my Violet character for healing, and it definitely gets a lot better once you put a couple uh, skill levels into that. Uh, so far in difficulty, I'm only playing on normal. Really, not not too challenging. I thought one of the auxiliary uh, optional maps was harder than the next story map, so that was kind of weird. But so far after that, it's kind of been an easy breeze through. Uh, in the early part of the game, I feel like I've spent more time outside the battlefield, but you know, I I guess that's just trying to get uh, familiar with the monastery and all that stuff. That's all I really had to say for this video. Uh, really just very short, quick first impressions because I feel like I'm still learning a lot. Like there's still things I haven't discovered yet. And I can safely say this game has a lot of things to do. Regarding the next video for Three Houses, I want to try to make it to the halfway mark or, or the where the time skip occurs. To make another video. Uh, I don't know when that's gonna be. Hopefully in a couple days. Uh, I have no idea how much longer I have to go. Uh, I'm looking forward to it and I guess I'm just gonna get right back to playing more Three Houses. Thanks for watching. If you've been playing the game, you know, let me know what you've thought so far after one day or so. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.